Betaine HCL versus regular betaine. Does one offer more health benefits? What's up and welcome to the video. I'm Dr. Daniel Ricciardi, gut health expert, licensed pharmacist, fitness enthusiast, and creator of SIBO Shortcut, the online program helping you get rid of SIBO, which includes support in a private Facebook group and all of my top protocols and recommendations for treating SIBO, all for a low monthly membership. Click the link below for a SIBO training and more SIBO Shortcut info. In this video, we're gonna talk betaine and answer the questions what is betaine the regular betaine also called trimethylglycine or tmg and what are the normal dosages and directions for taking it we'll talk what is betaine hcl and what are the normal doses and directions for using that one and then what are the key differences between the two then stay tuned until the very end of the video because we'll answer the question can you use them in place of one another and i'll share my personal experience using betaine hcl as a supplement and speaking of supplements everything in my full script online dispensary is 20 percent off click the link below to see what's available mm -hmm. and as a quick disclaimer the information provided in this video is for informational purposes only and is not intended as medical advice please consult with a healthcare professional before making any decisions regarding the use of betaine or betaine hcl for any health related matters mm -hmm. all right let's get started if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful please click that like button and subscribe to my channel for more related content what is normal betaine, betaine anhydrous, TMG, trimethylglycine? These are all the same thing. What is this substance? As shown in this diagram here, betaine is a compound consisting of the amino acid glycine with three methyl groups attached to it. The methyl groups are the CH3s. These contain one atom of carbon and three atoms of hydrogen. Remember this. Betaine has official labeled use for the treatment of homocysteinuria, which means too much of a compound called homocysteine in your blood. Besides this, betaine can serve several different functions in your body. These include supporting the kidney, liver, heart, cellular functions, and detox. And betaine does this mainly through assisting with a process called methylation. This is a very, very simplified photo of the methylation cycle. Methylation is a complex process that involves other vitamins and nutrients. Simply put though, the process of methylation is kind of like your body giving little methyl packages. These were these CH3 groups to other molecules in your body to help them work properly. Each molecule of betaine provides three of these methyl packages or these CH3s, one atom of carbon, three atoms of hydrogen. And then it doesn't exactly show it in this very simplified photo, but if you see where it says homocysteine on this diagram here, it helps convert that. If you draw a straight line from that back to methionine on the top of the diagram, it also assists with this. So homocysteine doesn't build up and become toxic in your body. When this methylation cycle is working properly, it does a few different things. One, these methyl groups help by forming caps, so to speak, on the ends of the strands of your DNA. This can prevent them from unraveling and therefore it may reduce the likelihood of cancer. Number two, it also assists in the production of glutathione, which is a very potent molecule that your body uses for detoxification. And number three, it assists with creating neurotransmitters such as serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine. Per this 2021 review by Biology Journal, this review describes the major physiological effects of betaine as a preventative agent for the treatment of various diseases, including alcoholic liver disease, metabolic associated fatty liver disease, and cancer due to its properties as an osmoprotectant and a methyl group donor. Betaine also attenuates oxidative stress, endoplasmic reticulum stress, inflammation, and cancer development. The protective effects are primarily associated with the regulation of methionine metabolism by removing homocysteine and maintaining SAM and SAH ratio which are metabolites of methionine. Basically what this is saying is betaine can help prevent and treat various diseases such as fatty liver disease and cancer. It works by protecting cells and adding these methyl groups to the ends of DNA strands to protect the DNA. It also can help reduce stress and inflammation in the body. Besides these benefits, there's also studies suggesting that betaine can improve exercise performance. For this 2003 study by the Journal of Nutrition, betaine is naturally found in a lot of different foods. Some foods containing the highest quantities of betaine include whole grains, wheat, beets, shrimp, and spinach. As for dosing, per the cystidine, which is betaine anhydrous package insert for treating homocysteinuria, a proper dosage seems to be about three grams twice a day or a total of six grams daily. Moving on, what is betaine HCL, also known as betaine hydrochloride? Betaine HCL is a molecule betaine that is bound to a hydrochloride molecule. As shown here, it looks very similar to regular 
regular betaine. However, betaine HCL is primarily used as a digestive support supplement that is commonly used to increase stomach acid. If we pull this diagram up one more time, this betaine HCL molecule breaks apart so that H shown in the HCL becomes separated and becomes a positively charged hydrogen atom, which is basically stomach acid. So this can help improve digestion and the absorption of nutrients such as protein and then specific vitamins and minerals. For this 2020 study by the Journal of Integrative Medicine, it talks about the fact that stomach acid is known to decrease as we age, therefore the need for it may increase over time. It also indicates a low acid environment is linked to reduced absorption of key micronutrients such as calcium, iron, folic acid, vitamin B6, and vitamin B12. Also, since gastric acid helps to eliminate harmful ingested microorganisms and hinders bacterial overgrowth in the stomach and small bowel, low stomach acid can increase the risk for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, SIBO, and specific microbial overgrowth from organisms like C. diff. And then moving ahead, this is from that same study. This is a basic protocol for betaine HCL. It's going to be shown right here. I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but this shows kind of how to start it, how to take it, and what to look for. Betaine HCL is a synthetic molecule, meaning that it's not available naturally in any foods. Therefore, it's available mainly in capsule and tablet form to be taken usually in the middle of meals. If you want to see more information on how to use betaine HCL supplements, you can click this link right here for more. All right, moving on, we're going to discuss the key differences between betaine and betaine HCL. First one is chemical composition. This is pretty straightforward. Betaine, it occurs naturally and it doesn't have added HCL. Betaine HCL is that betaine molecule with HCL added on. Primary uses for betaine for supporting the methylation process, which helps with a lot of organ functions such as heart, liver, kidneys, helps with a lot of cellular functions, including detox, and also protect DNA to make cancer less likely. Betaine HCL, on the other hand, is meant to help increase stomach acid and therefore aid with digestion. Can we use these in place of one another? They're very similar. Starting with betaine HCL, can betaine HCL provide the same benefits that normal betaine can? I couldn't actually find any studies talking about this specifically. I'm not a chemist, but if I were to venture a guess, because they're so similar, I would assume that the betaine HCL would still offer these methyl groups, but I can't say that definitively on here. And then can betaine give you the same results betaine HCL can? Obviously, it's missing the HCL, so it's not going to be directly increasing stomach acid. I did see one animal study that suggested that betaine can increase the activity levels of certain digestive enzymes, as well as increase the height and surface area of intestinal villi, which are needed for absorption of nutrients. As for my personal experience, I've never taken regular betaine, but I have used betaine HCL. Back when I was healing from small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, aka SIBO, I took betaine HCL for about nine months to a year. I used 650 milligram capsules, and at the highest dosage, I was actually up to taking eight capsules per meal, so 24 per day, and I didn't personally ever experience any side effects. This may not be the case for everyone else, so please follow the instructions for taking betaine HCL if you choose to do so. During my treatment, I did use a variety of different supplements, so it's difficult to know for certain how much impact the betaine HCL had, but I believe it had some impact on my gut healing and digestive symptoms. That is all for today. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel for more related content. I post a new full-length video every Monday in YouTube Shorts throughout the week. Since you watched till the end, I think you'll enjoy one of these two videos next. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.